So welcome to this GoSum tutorial. GoSum is a program to automatically compute one loop amplitudes. And uh, well, these are ba basic ingredients for an extra leading order calculation in uh, uh, high energy theory. So uh, one loop is just one of the ingredients for an extra leading order. That's why I separate the two things. And I'll show you how you can use go sum to, to do a full next to leading order calculation. But first, let's just focus on go sum and on how to compute a one loop amplitude with it. Um, go sum uh, is a program developed by many people. So some of them are still part of the collaboration. Some of them uh, left. But uh, many, many people um, are still working on it and, and uh, helped developing it. This is the website where you can find the manual and uh, some other useful informations. And uh, there are two published papers online. So uh, one on, from 2011 and one from 2014. Now, where am I with the mouse? Okay, so here is the outline. Um, I'll quickly give an overview, some general characteristics and feature. Grazie. Um, some general characteristics and feature. Uh, I'll then come to the usage of GoSum, so how to use it on its own to compute a one loop amplitude, which uh, you can then use for uh, studying uh, the one loop uh, amplitude characteristic to, or just compute single phase space points or, uh, well, do something uh, with some other parts. And then to the end, I'll show you how to interface uh, GOSAM to a full Mon uh, Monte Carlo um, to compute really a next to leading order process where you have a full next to leading order process uh, computed. It's going to be TT bar production in proton-proton collision. And uh, well, this I wrote OLP here stands for one loop program. So GoSum is going to be the one loop program in a more general Monte Carlo, which for the example, it's going to be Sherpa. I hope uh, we'll get that far uh, today. And the two talk to each other. You need to make two codes talk to each other via this b not Lesouche Accord interface. And then finally, I'll come to the conclusions and I have several uh, backup slides uh, for, for, for further references if, if you're interested in some more detail on how GoSum works. Now, let's come to the quick overview. Uh, I'll first start with a, a brief uh, uh, introduction on the origins of it. I'll then talk about how to how GoSum generates these one loop amplitudes and how it computes them uh, afterwards. So let's start with the origin. So GoSum is actually a merging of two names of two programs which already existed at the time. Golem, which stands for General One Loop Evaluator of Matrix Elements, and Samurai, which stands for Scattering uh, amplitudes from unitarity based reduction at the integral level. Now, these two codes could compute loop integrals, but um, in actually in two completely different ways, two complementary ways. The problem was that, uh, well, you can compute one loop amplitudes, but you need something which gives you the two loop, the, the one loop amplitudes. And that's from, uh, uh, that's where GoSum started. So GoSum started as a program to generate the one loop amplitudes that can be computed then with Golem or Samurai. Um, the first release was in 2012, the second 2014, and here uh, you see the main milestone, so GOSAM 1.0 and then uh, GOSAM 2.0 in 2014. Uh, so the, the 1.0 uh, was basically the first uh, uh, proof of concept uh, where 
two to three processes and simple two to four processes in QCD could be computed at, at one loop. The uh, renormalization of QCD was automatically built in and there was the first interface for external Monte Carlos, this BLHA1. Uh, Gotham 2.0 instead came with a further program, so not, non, not only Samurai and Golem, uh, Golem 95 because it's Fortran 95, but Golem. And there was a, th a third one which came in uh, thanks to the work of Pierpaolo uh, and uh, other collaborators, uh, uh, Tiziano and Eduardo. And it's called Ninja. So it's something similar to Samurai, but better, so it's a Ninja. Um, and there were some, some other improvements I, I going to talk, I'm going to talk later. Now, what's the basic uh, philosophy and characteristic behind the code? So, GoSum generates this one loop amplitude uh, algebraically. Um, and then basically produces d-dimensional integrands, everything via Feynman diagrams. Uh, the reduction, so the computation of the integrals, uh, can be done via, uh, at, at integral level, via uh, Samurai, which uses this d-dimensional ext extension of the OPP method, or via tensor integral calculation uh, using, as I said, uh, Golem. And then an improvement uh, of the integrand reduction strategy allowed them to, to develop a further code, uh, which is, is Ninja. Now, to come to the generation a bit more specifically, uh, to generate these one loop amplitudes, uh, we use Feynman diagrams and we generate Feynman diagrams with a code which is called QGraph. So this is another little code which just generates the diagrams. You tell them, you tell him which process you want and it generates in a symbolic way all the diagrams. Uh, you then need to put in Feynman diagram, uh, uh, sorry, the, the, the Feynman rules uh, and from this sketchy way of generating them, you need to have formula. And this is done with uh, another code, which is an algebraic uh, uh, code similar to Mathematica, but which works a bit uh, faster and maybe a bit less uh, user-friendly interface but uh, it's very fast and it's called form. So this code takes the uh, amplitude, the Feynman diagrams generated by QGraph, makes all the algebra and gives you a formula at the end, a mathematical formula where, which you can use to compute. Um, this can then be used and uh, in the operation of generating, Gosam tries to optimize at most uh, the, the output by using some caching, by grouping diagrams together and by summing, uh, summing up what, what can be summed. Uh, I'll come to these two uh, keywords uh, in the next slide again. And then for the more expert on you, uh, on, among you uh, who understand uh, what, what this means, the, the, the rational part, the rational term, is actually generated on the fly and there are two ways to reduce them, either implicitly by keeping uh, this mu dependent part or explicit by just... So yeah. Yes. So for QGraph, you have to provide the Feynman rules? For QGraph, you have to provide the Feynman rules, yes. Um, no, you have to tell uh, the, the Feynman rules to, uh, to QGraph. If you, so GoSum comes with standard model Feynman rules already built in, uh, in some slightly different way. So there is a standard model where you have a diagonal CKM matrix. There is a standard model where you have, for example, the Higgs effective coupling to gluons. There are different version of the standard model which are built in, but you can, of course, have your own a BSM model, and then you need uh, something like Feyn rules to generate the Feynman rules for you from a Lagrangian. You give this to GoSum, and GoSum will then tell QGraph how to do it. So 
it's automatic, uh, automatically done also, also this part. You just need the pre-step by using fan rules uh, for, for your favorite uh, BSM mode. Now, what I do I mean by grouping and, and, and summing? Um, this is how you write a general one loop amplitude with n propagators and then a numerator here. And you have a loop momentum Q here. And this is all in D dimensions. And here you see how we split the D dimensional part, which has a bar in a four dimensional part and a, a four minus epsilon dimensional part. Now the numerator is uh, in general a polynomial in the components of Q and mu and has a coefficient, tensorial coefficient in front. Um, this is just to set the notation. Uh, when, we, and when I say that we sum and group over diagram, it means the following. We can take uh, similar diagrams which have uh, the same loop part, but some different external part here, for example, which, are, which is not really part of the loop. These diagrams can be, have the same loop integral, so it can be added together before computing the loop integral. And this is a trick that goes some uses. On the other hand, um, especially for some of the reduction techniques, some of the ways to compute uh, these loop integrals, there are um, loop integrals like, like these three, for example, which, which are different, but you could obtain this one by putting two legs together here, by basically removing this propagator, you could get this one. For this reason, uh, Gosam tries to optimize also uh, in this way by just grouping all the diagram together, uh, which can be put under the same hat, which can be grouped together, and then computes the, 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 the integral afterwards. You may need to to do a shift in the in the momentum to really have the same denominator, but uh, you can do it. And Gosom does it automatically for you. You don't have to think about anything, and then uh, tries to optimize this uh, the best it can. This is an example here. This is uh, these are some Feynman diagrams which are automatically generated. When you generate a process with GoSum, you get a documentation. I'll come to that later. Uh, and this is, for example, Z plus two jets. So you see here, actually, it's, it's more than Z plus two jets. It's D, D bar going to E plus, E minus, gluon. No, sorry. D, D, mu, mu, D, D. So it's, it's even more, more than that. Okay, it's this. Or, or mu, sorry. Never mind. Mu. So these two guys come from the decay of a Z or a photon. So it's D, D bar to Z or photon which then decays to mu, mu plus, mu minus, and then another dd bar. And now, z and photon don't enter in the loop. They're always external here. So, but you see that you have the same diagram, once with a photon and once with a z, with a z, with exactly the same, uh, if you look at these two, with exactly the same external momenta here. And if you look at it uh, vertically, here we switched the two momenta, but what enters in the loop here is always the same. That's why these four diagrams can be summed together and be seen as one diagram. And, and Gossam does it before computing uh, the loop integral. Another possibility is that you have exactly the same diagram, but with different particles running in the loop. These three diagrams here are exactly the same but here there is a UU bar in the loop. This is a ghost, and these are gluons. So the momenta are exactly the same, 
It's just the na nature of the particle in the loop which changes. So also all these diagrams can be summed together uh, and processed uh, together. Coming to the, to the grouping of, of diagrams sharing the same denominator, uh, in the documentation when you generate a process, you get something like this, for example, uh, for the process I was showing before, now this is a group two, it doesn't matter uh, what are the details. Uh, when GoSum analyzes the diagrams, the structure of these diagrams, applies some momenta, some shift in the momenta, and then groups uh, the diagrams which share the same uh, set or subset of denominators uh, together to process them uh, together. So once all the diagrams are generated, uh, you can really start computing them. And uh, well, as I said already, there are three ways to compute uh, one loop diagrams uh, with GoSum. Uh, once with, you can compute them with, with Samurai, with Ninja, or with Golem 95. Um, these three programs further rely on other programs to compute the scalar one loop integral. So uh, I've shown you before the numerator has in general some tensor structure. You can reduce this. At the end, you still need to compute a scalar one loop integral. And for this, there are packages with all these scalar one loop integrals uh, um, coded in. And these are three examples of such programs that compute the scalar one loop in integral. So Samurai, Ninja, and Golem 95 will call one of these three to, to do the actual one loop calculation. Now, there is not only one choice here. You can change on the fly uh, which of the methods you need to compute the loop integral. So you can say, I compute once the loop with Samurai, and then I check if with Ninja I get the same, or I go with Golem 95. And this, can be, this can be useful to really check that you are getting the right answer. We are doing with numerics here. Sometimes numeric is not so stable. Um, so it's actually useful to have a backup solution so that you can check uh, if, if you get the same answer with all three programs. And uh, we are actually using this um, for uh, an internal uh, rescue system so that we don't need to compile everything in quadruple precision uh, uh, to, to, to get a reliable answer. Furthermore, all of these three uh, reduction programs uh, support higher rank uh, loop integrals. What does this mean? So, as I said before, a general one loop amplitude with n denominators looks like this. Usually, the power of the loop momentum, the, the, so the power of the loop momentum in the numerator is called the rank. And usually this is smaller or equal to the number of denominators. Now, if you're doing BSM physics, or uh, for example, also when you, when you do uh, this Higgs effective uh, theory, where you just uh, shrink this top loop to a point and compute glue glue to Higgs directly, now, uh, this gives rise to higher ranks. So the, the, the rank here can go, for example, in this case, one, one power uh, higher than, than the number of, of, of denominators you have. And uh, for this, all these three programs had to be adapted a bit. Uh, this was done as, so that we could actually uh, analyze uh, in more detail what happens with uh, Higgs uh, and Jets. So exactly for this, for this program here. Now, as I said, there are different reduction strategies. Um, this is what GoSum does by default, um, can be changed by the user at any time. So when you give it a point, uh, a, a phase space point, I mean, so a set of momenta, and you want GoSum to compute uh, an amplitude, a number of one loop diagrams, uh, you can choose if you want to compute it with Samurai or with Ninja. Uh, the default is to use Ninja. That's why there is a red box around here. 
Now, both of these two codes have some internal tests that can be switched on and off to check how stable the result is. Uh, these are by default not used. Um, Ninja checks at the end uh, the poll coming from Ninja with the, with the poll that you should get from, from the real part. Maybe I'm getting a bit technical here. Uh, anyway, uh, it can check polls or it can check if, if the, the, the amplitude here makes sense by looking how large the number is. Usually, when you get numerical instabilities, you get uh, crazy high numbers. And this is this k factor check. So if everything is okay, okay, you're done. You, you have the result for that point. If something looks strange, uh, what is done is that the amplitude is invariant on the rotation, so we rotate a bit the phase space point and, and recompute it and check again. And if it's, if it's the same as the one without rotation, then we say, okay, fine. We get the same thing before and after rotation, so we are done. If this doesn't look the same, then we actually switch to another code. So instead of using Ninja, we then go to Golem95 and, and check here what's going on. Uh, and again, we, we check the, 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 the pole and the K factor. If this is okay, then we accept it. Otherwise, we say, mm, this point is not really good. Let's get another one. Um, Golem 95 is smaller than using uh, integrand reduction, uh, sorry, slower than using uh, integrand reduction, but um, especially in, in for diffi difficult kinematic, uh, it has uh, some uh, rescue built in, some other parameterization of the, of the momenta uh, to really handle this. That's why it's a bit more stable, especially in these uh, unstable kinematical points. Yes. 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 Uh, well, Per Paolo is more expert on this, but this is a test at, oops, at integrand level. Have to cancel. Have to be finite. Therefore, from the calculation of the real, which is a three level calculation, one can predetermine what it should be for. Okay? And therefore, this is a strong check on the final answer, uh, at least uh, for the virtual calculation. Yes, these, these internal tests are usually switched off because you may trigger tests on diagrams which are really give, giving a tiny contribution. So losing a lot of time for something which is actually not, not relevant at all. Um, yeah. So when you generate a code, there is a configuration file. Uh, I'll, show, I'll show it to you uh, later, where you can actually uh, switch on and off and choose how good and how bad things are 
to, to decide if yes or no, here or here or here. So these are these PSP check threshold one, threshold two, threshold three. These are flags and you can put numbers to really see how many digits you want. You want to have it like eight digits, 10 digits. Uh, this can be changed. And you can, of course, also decide that you want first to compute with Golem 95 and then go with Ninja. This, is every, this can be all changed by the user. back on the talk. Good. Yeah. So, um, finally, to give you the big picture, I talked f about many codes <laughs> in so little time. Uh, GoSum per se is a Python code, which uh, generates the amplitude by calling another code uh, QGraph, and then form and spinny, which is a plugin for form, to really generate the algebraic formula for the amplitudes. And then to execute the code, there are these three loop integral reduction uh, programs, Samurai, Goal95, and Ninja, and these uh, scalar um, one loop uh, integral packages, which are AVH Olo, QCD loop, or Goal95C. Um, all of these programs here for the code execution are s assembled in something in a package which we call gosam contrib and uh, whereas this one come separate uh, they are all developed these programs are developed externally these these ones are uh, these ones are instead in house and also these two here are actually something external now with the installer that uh, that you got via via email uh, the link that you got via email you are actually installing everything in one go. And everything is linked and put together such that you don't need to uh, take care about that. So um, before coming to that, let me quickly uh, go through how uh, GoSum does it again. So you want to have a code to compute a one loop amplitude. That's what you want to have at the end. You want to have a Fortran, and this is going to be a Fortran code to compute one loop amplitude for a given process. So how you do it? Well, with GoSum, you take an input card, which can either be a Monte Carlo, a kind of old-fashioned Monte Carlo, or really just a, an input card, a file. We are going to see both examples. You give it to GoSum. GoSum calls QGraph to generate the amplitude. It gets back the answer. It analyzes it, produces a skeleton of the code, and then give the amplitude to form, to really do the algebra. Uh, and at the end, the algebra is put into the skeleton and you get the full code at the end. So you are, you are able, GOSAM is able to perform the grouping at that scale? The GOSAM is analyzing, yeah, GOSAM is analyzing the diagrams here and then basically teaching form how to put together or basically saying to form, okay, you have to sum these and these and these and diagrams together when you process them, yeah. Okay, and then you have the code, and now you can run it. So at running time, you call one of these three, which call one of these three uh, further, and, and you can really run the code and compute, compute the amplitudes. Now, let's come to uh, some more concrete example. I think it's time to go through the example. How many of you have already the code installed? Hands up. Okay, uh, just a part. Um, let's let's invest uh, I don't know five minutes to see if everybody can at least start the installation, uh, so that everybody has more or less installation. If the installation is fine, uh, we can look at uh, at what is uh, produced. So in the folder where you installed, after the installation, you should have something like this. Uh, a folder uh, GoSum, which contains uh, GoSum, uh, the contrib, form, and QGraph uh, in some form here. Both, probably both the tarballs and the folders where the code is installed in. 
And then, uh, well, okay, the installer is still there. You have a, a log of the installer, which should, where, uh, where it's written which version of every code is, is installed. Don't delete this because uh, this is used by the, by the installer. If in six months you run the installer again, just, just like this, without deleting anything, you run the installer again and there are some updates, we did some updates on the server, the installer will automatically tell you, oh, there are these and these and these programs which can be updated. Do you want to update them? So just leave the lock there. The local folder instead has the, the executable, the installation, the, the, the files which are really then used uh, to run the code uh, inside. So if you look inside, you will have a folder bin, a folder uh, lib, a folder share. And in the bin, there are, for example, the executable for form. Uh, form and T form is just a parallel version of form. Uh, the config, the GoSum executable, which is called GoSum PY, and the QGraph executable. Now, there is also this file here, .sh. This is the file which contains the addresses of where the GoSum things are. So, this file you need to source by typing source this file to, to tell the computer uh, where the different libraries and the executable are. Once you type source this file, the, the computer will know where, where the things uh, of, of GoSum are and then you can work on it. You can also put them uh, directly uh, in this, in this um, environment variables, if you know what I'm talking about, or in your bashrc file, then you don't need to, to type source every time. Uh, yeah, you have to put bin in the path and lib in the LD, uh, LD library path. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I assume, well, the, the, the real answer is no, but uh, let's go on and, uh, well, now the, the, the fun starts. Um, yeah, I mean, we are at this level of technology probably, uh, in the sense that there is no fancy uh, GUI or so, but uh, it works, it works perfectly. So, okay, go, now you, you can, you can uh, in this go some folder, let me go to slides back. Here, if you enter in this GoSum folder, there is another subfolder which is called GoSum. This is really the GoSum code, because then there is also the GoSum contrib and the other thing. So if you enter GoSum, GoSum, which is this step here, and you enter in a folder example, you will see a list of examples. Uh, so the, the folder here have different names, and these names are just uh, the, some, some processes. Got that far? Yeah? Cool. Um, so these are all examples that you can actually try to run. You just enter the folder, you type make, and it's gonna work. Uh, now let's, let's look at one of them. We look at PPW plus one gluon. So this is W plus one jet and the W decaying to a positron and a neutrino um, at the LHC, so MPP. Uh, the folder for this is Udenek. So um, this is U, uh, U quark, D quark going in posit uh, positron, uh, neutrino, gluon. Uh, so if you enter there, we find three files. Uh, a make file, a test folder, and an input card. Uh, the test folder just contains a face space point which was already checked with another program. And uh, this is just to check that what you get is giving the right number. Uh, but, but, but for the rest, we can forget about that. What is important now is, is this input card. This is what is telling GoSum what to do. So let's look at this a bit more in detail. You can uh, open that file and it should look like this. 
So we have process name. This is used uh, as a label in everything within that process that GoSum generates. You can tell GoSum in which folder is generated, and here by default it's just a folder called virtual. And uh, now comes the, the, the core. The process name here, it's Udenek to be, to, be, yeah, to be consistent, but you can put uh, ciao ciao people or whatever. Everything is going to work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the code is going to be generated in a subdirectory virtual. Yeah. Okay. So now we said uh, Udenek, so input is 2 minus 1. These are, these are now numbers for the particle flavors in, in, in this PDG code. So the U quark is 2, the D quark is 1. Uh, and so on. I don't know if you are familiar with it. Um, so in is u minus d. So minus one is a d bar, is an anti quark, anti d quark. Out is t uh, 12 is neutrino. You see it here. Minus 11 is the positron, 11 is the electron, and 21 is the gluon. Now, uh, these are PDG codes. You could actually also use uh, uh, some other naming here um, for those who are not familiar with. But but you can find the online. There is a if you Google PDG code particle, you find a nice um, PDF where there is a list of all possible particles and SUSY particles with all the number which correspond to it. Usually from, from 1 to 6, it's the quarks. And then 7 and 9, as far as I know, are not occupied. And then uh, there are the leptons, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. And then uh, 21 starts the gluon, 22 is the photon, 23 Z, 24 W, or, all, or the other way around, I don't remember. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so, OK. This is really telling GoSum what comes in and what goes out, this, the process. Now. We can choose in which model, and as I was mentioning before, there are several options here which already are there in GoSum. You could, of course, generate some other models, uh, some BSM models with some other code and feed them to GoSum. That, that's another possibility. Um, I have an ex there is an example on how to do that, so if somebody is interested, uh, we can have a look at that later. Okay, we choose here just standard model. There is a possibility to choose SM Diag, which is a standard model with a diagonal CKM matrix, or SM effective Higgs coupling, where you are having this Higgs to gluon coupling also built in, in the model. Okay, standard model. Now, order. Um, we want to compute QCD corrections to this process. And now we need to tell GOSAM what's the three level order of the coupling and what's the one loop order of the coupling. Now, we are doing this, right? So we have just at, 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 uh, at three level, we have a coupling here. one power of, uh, of the strong coupling here and uh, nothing else. This is electroweak. So the, so we want to compute QCD corrections. The three level power is one. And if we start computing one, a one loop correction, we have two additional, so it's gonna be three. That's why QCD one three. Okay. Uh, of course, you could compute also QED corrections, and then you have instead of QCD here, you have to write QED. Um, 
ElectroWeek uh, is in development, uh, so let's forget about that for the moment. Okay, then the, you can pass, QGraph has some ways to filter out diagrams that you don't want. Q, QGraph is just stupid. QGraph is gonna generate everything according to the Feynman rules that you are giving. Now, some of them are just not physical. And so you can decide how to filter them out. And this is an example here that you say, I just want one of these W plus or W minus propagators, which is this one here. Okay. Now there are two, two other interesting uh, options here, one and zero. These are variables that you are setting either to one or to zero algebraically. That means GOSAM sets them either to one or to zero algebraically, and then there is no way you can set another number in the code, okay? If you set a variable to one, for example, here we say that the mass or to zero, the mass of the U quark, the mass of the D quark, and the mass of the electron should be zero. We are computing in a massless case, so these parameters here are not going to appear in the algebraic expression of the code. They're just set to zero. That away. And the same here is for the couplings. We set GS and, uh, and the E, the electromagnetic coupling, we set it to one, and then we can change it uh, externally by giving the input. So this is a kind of a normalization of our, uh, of the answer. So this is important, this is algebraically, so no way to recover it afterwards. If you wanna change the mass afterwards, you, you need to leave it, uh, not put it here. Okay, then you can change the mass afterwards. Otherwise, if you generate, if you generate without uh, saying zero for this, you will get the possibility to have massive U quarks, and massive D quarks. Thanks, yes. Um, okay. Oops. So, you can specify the elicities. Gosam is working in a, an elicity formalism, so it's classifying. Uh, you will see it once we generate a code. Uh, you will have different folders for the different elicities. And here you can tell Gosam which elicities you want, which, which are the ones which are actually not zero. And since the W here, you have, you have massless quarks and the W, which is coupling only to the left-handed component of the quarks and so on. So you can really save a lot by specifying which elicities are actually there. Um, I think in the meanwhile, the code for the Ws and the standard model recognize automatically that the order are zero. But uh, okay, if you know it, uh, it's always good to put it so that the code stays small and doesn't get larger for nothing. It's, it's uh, useless to have a large code which gives uh, zero for most of the parts. So to compute numerically a zero is always tricky. Yes? If you have a, a massive particle, a very massive particle, then can you still use elicities? Yes, but you need to specify both. I mean, if, you, if, if I would have here uh, the, the, for example, the quark mass, uh, the, the quark line, which is massive, I, I wouldn't have just these two, but also the other one. Yeah. 
but uh, you just do not specify or you specify uh, all the ones which are there. Uh, yes. I mean, by not specifying, the worst that can happen is that you get a code which is larger than what you are really needed, but that's... I mean, yeah, you can, you can do the first, you can do the first round just like this and then you see, oh, but actually I could remove this part. So you can do it, you can improve a bit uh, in a couple of iterations, but yeah. And finally, regularization scheme. Now, the default is to use uh, dimensional reduction, which is abbreviated by DREAD. And here in this example, because of the comparison, which is in the test, which is using uh, CDR, so the just conventional dimensional regularization, that's what CDR stands for. Um, we, we specify here that we want CDR. Okay, good. Are there questions on the card? Yes. No Goldstone boson. Uh, well, okay, actually there is the comment here I, and I copy it as it is in the card and distributed with the code. We are not removing any Goldstone boson here but they are not even there because the, you, do not, you don't have these things in the loop. The, 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 the loop is just going to be QCD. These things are outside of the loop, so you don't need to. Uh, it's, yeah, it's there in, the, in a comment in the card, and I just blindly copied the card. But it's actually, this line has nothing to do with the code. So, Further questions? Everything fine? Ready to generate? Okay. All right. So then we can start the generation. Now, uh, we had a look at the card. If you are still in the folder where the card is, you can type either make or make gosum. If you type make, the generation will start and at the end also the test which is in this test folder, it's going to be executed and you will see that you get uh, numbers which are fine. If you just type make gosum, uh, the code will just generate without running the test, but you can try it and, and, and we see what, what, what happens. Should take uh, some time and I hope you, it's going to get through. Let me know. So, um, for those of you who got through, uh, you got some numbers and some reference numbers, and they should agree. Now, we are coming to what these numbers are uh, in a while. 
Let's have a look first at what was generated. So you will have now a, a folder which wasn't there before, which is called virtual, as we said in the card. And in virtual, you should have something like this. Now, very briefly, there is a folder code gen. This contains files to generate the amplitudes, files for form, which are uh, used to really generate the algebraic part of the amplitudes. There is a folder common, which contains some files which are um, of common uh, usage, like uh, in particular, what the user then uh, uses in here is the file model F90, where you can change, I don't know, the mass of the, the, the W, the width of the W, uh, masses of, of, of other massive quarks and so on, if you have them. And there is a config.f90 file. This one contains uh, some configuration flags that you can change. If you want to use Ninja, if you want to use Golem95, uh, how you want to have this rescue system I was talking before set up. So this can all be changed in common config f90. Then you have these diagrams files here. These are the output of QGraph. Uh, for the three level and for the one loop, the zero for the three level and the one for the one loop. If you just have a quick look at them, you will see that's the, the real, out, real genuine output of QGraph, which is then reprocessed by GoSum uh, to analyze the diagrams. But this is really just the output of QGraph. The folder doc contains some documentation. We'll go in there in a second. And then, uh, so we had, we had actually two elicities here. Um, which are, I mean, all the elicities are fixed apart from the one of the gluon in this case. It's the, the gluon is only one who, which, which can have two different elicities. Gosam can remap these two helicities into one. That's why you have only one helicity folder here, which is called helicity zero. If you have more, it's just helicity one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, then you have some make files. And finally, there is the, the model HH file, which contains uh, the Feynman rules for, um, for form. If you look at, I don't know if you're familiar with form, if you look at what is in this file, it contains the rule for form. It's really some algebraic uh, form rules. And then there is the folder matrix. In here, all the amplitudes and elicities are put together, squared, summed, and from what is in this um, folder, you get the final answer. So. Let's, uh, let's first go now in this documentation, in this doc folder. So if we enter in doc and you type make, um, you have, hopefully you have LaTeX installed. Good. Uh, <laughs> uh, so I realize that there are a lot of things that you actually should already have installed, but that's kind of a standard <laughs> uh, package of programs or set of programs that you should have in, in Munich. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, if make goes through, you should get the PDF, process.pdf file. And if you open it, you should see something like this. Uh, now this tells you when I, when I tried this example. Um, and so you see that you have like two three-level diagrams, 11 and a low diagrams, and then if you scroll down, you see uh, the helicities, the conventions, um, and you see the, all the Feynman diagrams uh, and how Gosam groups them. Does it work? See, it's your okay. Good, this you get for all processes. So it's actually a good practice to, once you generate something, to have a look at the documentation because here you will see if you generated some uh, wrong diagrams, if, if something is missing, or if you have way too many things and you can try to remove some particles which are not uh, needed and so on. Okay, 
Now, let's go back one folder and go into the folder matrix. There, there is a file uh, uh, tests.f90. So you can enter and type make test.exe. And this should produce an executable test.exe, which you can then execute. And if you execute it, you should get something similar to what you got before if you, if you typed make. If you typed only make ghost, I'm not, but if you typed make, you, should, you got something similar. Now, what is this test.exe doing? It's generating some random face space point uh, with, uh, well, with Rambo, uh, never mind. And then it computes the, the leading order and the NLO. Now, what, what, what does it mean? Uh, I just put the formula here for reference again. The leading order is just the amplitude for the three-level process uh, squared. And uh, we set GS to 1 in the card. So forget about this. This prefactor is just 1. You will get A0. This number here, the first number is A0. This is the, the, the born. And then you get NLO finite single pole, NLO double pole. So the one loop part here, the interference, twice real uh, part of three level times one loop. Uh, this is the normalization that Gosam uses. And this has a finite part, a part which is proportional to one over epsilon, which is the single pole and the part which is proportional to 1 over epsilon square, which is the double pole. This here, C minus 2, the double pole coefficient, is usually a rational number. So, uh, and you see it here. It's, it's indeed correct. Now, the pole structure, as Pepalo was saying before, can be inferred also from, from the real contribution. So from the one where you have here one emission more, this gets singular. and uh, and you can compute from there the poles. It's a universal formula to do that. And Gossam computes this as well. These are this ER single pole and ER double pole. These are poles which are computed in a completely different way in a hard-coded formula, in a much simpler way. And you can check these two agrees. And they agree, actually, to a quite a large number of digits, 15 digits here. So everything seems to be very stable. And uh, what you cannot predict instead, and what you're inter really interested in, is, is actually this, is the finite part. So it's this uh, C0. These numbers here, to get them so nice and rational, you need to divide by the Born. That's why you know, what, what actually is printed here is uh, divided by, by A0, which is, the, which is the Born. OK? Now, I don't know how familiar you are with Fortran code, but uh, let's have a look at this test F90 file which produced uh, this code. So I, I removed pieces which are not so important here. You have program test, and then you have somewhere you have, here there are some declaration of variables which are not, it's not so important. At some point you have integer and AVT, this is the number of events that you want, which is set to one, you just printed one but you can print more. Then there is an initialization function here, this init golem. And then here, you really generate one of those random face space points. It is this do, um, uh, routine here. So you are generating from one to an event, so many numbers of events as, as you want. And for each one, you have to basically generate this event, this ramp function fields, uh, vects are just vectors for momenta, four momenta vectors for all the particles. You boost them to the center of mass. Uh, the scale, the normalization scale, is computed as the, the, the um, scalar product of the two incoming particles. This is just a choice, you can change it. And then the core function is this S amplitude, which is computing the square amplitude for the given phase space point, which is stored in VEX, at the scale, scale 2. And this gives back amp, 
amp is a, are four numbers, the one that you saw before, which are given back by this routine. And prec is just a, a precision flag that you can actually set if you want to say have, uh, um, so actually this is, this is uh, given also. So amplitude, amplitude will tell you, we, I managed to compute it with so much precision if you need it. In, in, this, is an, this is an integer in the number of digits that you have. And then you can call this ER subtraction, which are just the poles computed in these other ways. And, and here below you see the, the, the output part, which was actually printed to screen. So you are computing amp, so finite part, single pole, double pole, divided by amp zero. This is the born. So these are the four numbers stored in amp. And here the part which prints then the comparison to the to the uh, infrared poles. And then after all, after the end, there is a, an exit uh, golem function just to uh, empty cache and everything. So this is the basic. If you have your own code where you compute, where you generate phase space point, you can call this function here from there. And basically, you can compute one loop processes. This is, this is really the, the basic interface function for, for then uh, using the code. Okay, here, I forgot I had some more comments. Everything kind of clear? Questions? Yeah? If I want to compute QCD and QED correctly, together, should I run the uh, program twice? Uh, QCD and QED together, uh, this is a bit beyond the scope, I mean, Ah, but you don't mean mixed. Well, I mean, I have the same initial and final state. Ah, okay, 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 sorry. I thought mixed, correct. No, no, okay. If you want to have QCD and QED separate, you just generate two calls, one with the QCD and one with the, yeah. Okay. Because you have to do how you want to manage them. So you have to add something for instance, for the same phase-based point, you can call simultaneously, not inside, or depending on the same thing, in the same, Yeah, this is uh, up, up, uh, up to you. The, um, the reason, for example, for this process name that we have is that all modules are then having that, uh, that string that you are giving there as a uh, prefix. So that you, if you want to do something like this, for example, you give just a different name and you don't have conflict, you can put everything into one code. That's the reason, the technical reason behind that. Okay, now if now you saw one example, and that's actually now you, you are ready to play with all other examples that are there. So if you want to uh, restore the initial status in this example folder, you just go back uh, in this uh, Udenic folder, you type make very clean, everything is gone, and you can start from scratch again. So if there are no questions, no further questions, uh, I, I'll show you some other examples. Of course, there are many. You can try on your own some others and, and see what are the differences. There are examples for using fan rules. There are uh, several other examples. Okay. All right. So let's continue. Um, let's have, so th there is the possibility to filter diagrams, not only with this QGraph command, but also with, with really with GoSum, with the Python. 
Uh, I'll just very quickly show you uh, an example. So if you go into this other uh, example folder, which you should have among the examples, DDEEG, this is Z plus one jet. So DD bar in E plus in minus gluon. Uh, you just enter there and you let and you look at the input card. We will not generate this process. We'll just look at the input card very quickly. You see that there are these two lines at the very end. Filter.nlo, something which is called Matloop filter, uh, because this process is compared with the, the paper where this was actually uh, uh, published. And uh, filter.module is, is a file is equal to filter.py. Now, filter NLO, it means that applies, it applies on the one loop diagram. There is a possibility to apply it also on loop on leading order diagrams by saying filter.lo. Okay, anyway, what's important is that you are telling here to GoSum that there is a filter called in this way and it is in this file. Now, if you look at the filter.py file, in there you will see how the filter looks like. So this is kind of an external uh, Python code which is then uh, read in. So the first filter here, zero loop, uh, defines, for example, uh, diagrams that are zero due to, due to the Faris theorem. And here you see how the filter is, uh, this is basically Python code, it's how it is defined. There are already some flags and some variables which are uh, recognized by GoSum, they are built in into GoSum. So if we have like a loop diagram with three vertices and the vertex which is like for example uh, photon quark quark or gluon quark, so if we have actually one vertex here which is photon quark quark and two which are gluon quark quark and uh, the loop is a pure quark loop then this diagram is zero so this filter here is returning only this type of diagram if we apply this filter to the diagrams d this function will return only this type of diagrams there's another one here where uh, well, we have quark loops uh, with the gauge boson attached to the loop. This is another type of filter. Uh, and also here you see if we have a, a Z or a, of a photon quark quark vertex, at least one or more. And uh, it's a pure quark loop as well. Then uh, this filter filters out this, this type of, of diagrams. Here we have also uh, TT bar bubbles or BB bar bubbles and then we can actually put together and we say that now this is selecting these type of diagrams if we don't want then we just need to put a not in front so if we apply this is this filter here and we say return not something like this and not for example top loops then this filter here will basically remove all the diagrams uh, from the generation. This is the another possibility to select parts of the diagrams uh, that, that, that you want. And there are some other, if you are familiar with Python, you can have a look at this, this folder into Python. There, there are also other functions which are already uh, predefined. Okay, now, so far we looked at examples which are already there. Now let's have a look at uh, a standalone. Let's assume now we really write our own card and uh, generate it. So if you have the tarball that uh, I send around, there is a folder standalone in there. You can go in there and you should find three files. Um, so originally there were, there was just one, now there are actually three Uh, here. These are the three files. Uh, one of them is to compute 
glue glue to Higgs glue in the full standard model. So this is a, is a loop induced process. There is no leading order. Let's compute this. And the other one is something, uh, is an QED example. So instead of looking always at QCD, we look at QED, where we have a, a muon which we set massive and an electron um, scattering in QED. And the, the third one is the same where we also have a, a further photon radiated. Um, so, Um, if you have uh, the, the tutorial tarball, did you did you download this tarball here? Um, not. Uh, did you get the, my email? There should be a link to that tarball. Um, So okay, let's have a look at this uh, at this card here, glue glue, Higgs glue. Oh, I forgot to put in yellow here. Okay, so just very quickly, now we are already familiar with it. Process name, we did, we, we call it Higgs one jet. This this is the folder where it's going to be generated. So it's twenty one twenty one. This is the gluon going in twenty one twenty five. Twenty five is the Higgs. Now, this is a loop-induced process, so this is really the new thing here. We are going to compute QCD loops, but the tree level doesn't exist, so it's a none. And we have three powers, one, two, three, at one loop. We are using the standard model uh, with diagonal CKM. We, we can even pass here some values already for what's the bottom and the top mass. So we are allowing to, to run here in the loop both bottom and top quarks. We put to zero the mass of the, the D, the U, and the, the width of both bottom and top. One, as, as, uh, as usual, the, the couplings here we set to one. Then there is this symmetry command here, family and generation. So this is what this thing does. And uh, unless you're using, uh, you're doing some CK, uh, um, some W process where you want the full CKM matrix to be there, this is a good thing to have because it saves you some of the, of the uh, hel helicities and so on. So it, this filter allow only flavor changing interaction within one family. So it, the keyword is family for quark and generation for leptons. It's doing the same. It's not needed for this process, but I put it just for your information. This is actually good to have Unless, as I said, you're doing something with Ws where you want uh, the full CKA matrix to be there. Here are some other um, options for QGraph. And here, filter LO and NLO, as I've shown you before, you can put them in a separate file. But you can also directly write them here. So in this case, we don't want the Higgs to, to couple to these use C's and S, which are massless. Now, even if we set the mass to, to zero, uh, QGraph is going to generate this, these diagrams, and, uh, and we will get them, because QGraph will just give everything. Now, with this, we avoid to have these diagrams in the, in the thing. What? Wanted to say? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I, didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize. Good. I, I, it wasn't made on purpose. <laughs> okay, now let's have a quick look at the other card. Uh, for QED corrections, so uh, mu e, I call it mu, uh, virtual mu e, 
uh, we have uh, muon electron going to muon electron QED at leading order it's two couplings the one loop is four we use standard model we can set here some uh, parts to zero oh sorry I, this is commented out this is a typo in the slide but um, these, these, these things are set to zero and actually I think there is some more in the actual file that you that you have uh, because I, I, I changed it quickly again yesterday evening um, another important thing here is for example we want to avoid W's uh, ghosts Hicks and so on so we all say no propagator we don't want propagators of, of these particles here and that's we this, this we tell directly to QGraph and this will just remove all these diagrams uh, straight away okay Question? yes Well, because we want QED corrections. You may, you, you could say, I want it. You could decide, it's up to you. I mean, it's, it's really something that it's triggered to what you would like to compute. Okay, so when you, when you specify that you are, uh, that you want QED corrections, doesn't this already take it around about that you don't want Ws? Uh, no, I think, uh, no, it will put Ws in if, I mean, it goes with the uh, G week, I think, and then so it will okay. put. I mean, QED means the whole electron yes. So it, it's not just photons here, no. Okay. It's going to put uh, uh, G week, actually. Okay. So it's counted in, in G week, yes. Okay, now you can, uh, you can try out one of the two cars, both of them. Now, if the executable of GoSum is working, you just type GoSum PY the input card for one of the two cases, and uh, you should get a name, virtual underscore whatever name, which is in the card, depending on the process that you typed. Uh, yeah, try it, and, uh, and then we can have a look at what you got. Now, before then, Typing make in the example was doing everything. Now we do the different steps by hand. Um, did it work? Yes? So if you enter now in the folder virtual that was created, you will see that, uh, that you have the same structure we, are having, we were having before in the examples. If you look at what is in helicity, you will see that there is almost nothing. Some files, but very few. Uh, if you look at what is in code gen, you will see that there are a lot of .frm files, .hh files, some .py files. These are all files used to generate the code. Uh, there are some Fortran files instead in the directory common. Now, Oops, sorry. So now we can actually start really generating the amplitudes by typing, uh, if, you, if you are now inside the, the folder virtual, typing make source. If you type make source, you will see form and Python uh, doing something. This is now generating the code. And now, if that is finished, you can look again in the, in the folder Helicity, and now you will see that there is something in there. So form generated the, the, the algebraic expression for the amplitudes and uh, put them in uh, Helicity. Okay. Is make source still running? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. It, it, takes a little while and yeah as I said if uh, if you look again in helicity zero when 
uh, when it's gone through, you will see that uh, uh, there is something there. And then you can <coughs> type make compile. This will then compile the code. And then again, you can go in matrix and, and, and my, uh, do make test exe and run exe again the, the test. So, You should see something like this. Okay. Uh, if everybody got that far, uh, I'll try to continue because now we are ready. Uh, well, at some point you will be hungry, probably. So let's uh, let's let's go on another, another beat. Um, assume you you have lost your input card, or you are wondering what what you use to generate a process. If you don't remember, in the doc folder there is a, a, a file which is called redo.log. If you look into that fo in that file, you should find again all the input command that you gave in your input card. So this is basically telling you again everything that you did for that process. And if you rerun it with this as an input card, you should get again exactly the same type of code. Um, now, there are many other options which I didn't show you today. Uh, you, have a, you can have a list of all of them. If you type gosum.py minus minus template, you will get a template.in file, which is a template input card, with all the options and some explanations about all of them. Of course, uh, further documentation you find uh, on the two papers uh, about GoSum and also on the online manual, uh, which if you have the PDF of this, of this presentation, these are these are links. These are hyperlinks, so you should uh, get them by just typing on, on these names. Okay, make just as this is more or less how it works. Questions. Okay, this is by running the muon example, and uh, well, massive initial state particles are not uh, implemented by default, so you will get this warning. This is also a QC, a QED example, so the poles here you see that are wrong. Uh, everything expected, so this is not that straightforward. QCD is automatic. QED with a massive initial state, you need to work a bit to make it really uh, fine. But uh, that's why I, I showed it. All right. Um, if there are no further questions, and if you still are interested and uh, not too hungry, I could show you how to run now a full NLO calculation with that, which is using GoSum as a one-loop uh, provider. Very briefly, oops, sorry, the color is a bit bad. Um, anyway, very, very briefly, for a full next reading order calculation, we have the born, we have the real, which is divergent, so we need subtraction terms uh, to make it finite so that we can actually compute this integral. Then these subtraction terms are integrated separately 
in this way. Um, and then we have the virtual. So far, we basically only looked at this. For a full next leading order, you need all the rest. You need the, the matrix element for real, for born, and you need something which does the phase space integration for you, so which generates phase space points to really perform the integration. Now, uh, this is usually the task of a Monte Carlo, and then the virtual corrections, the one loop program here, can be interfaced. There is a standard interface uh, which allow these two codes to talk to each other. Gosam has this uh, built in, and it works in the following way. The Monte Carlo produces an order file. It basically contains the list of things that the one loop code should compute. This is then given to the one loop code. This reads the file, writes a so-called contract file. It contains what it really produced. And this is given back to the Monte Carlo, which reads, the, where, which reads this file in. And if everything is there, the calculation can start. And then uh, there is a phase of code generation and linking. And then at running time, there is a function here, OLP start, which initializes the one loop code. And then for every phase space point, this is now the Monte Carlo generating phase space point. It's not Rambo in our toy test file, which does it, but the Monte Carlo is generating phase space points. It gives them to the OLP to compute, and the OLP gives the result back. This is the basic idea behind it. Now, uh, I have a concrete example in the tutorial. I think now for time reasons, I'll not let you try to install Sherpa. There is an installer in the, in the, in the folder called Sherpa. You, in principle, should just type it, and uh, we hope for the best. You can try it. If you have problem, just email me, or we can try to fix it. But uh, I would now invest too much time again. Otherwise, we are going to finish in a couple of hours. Um, anyway, you have to install Sherpa. You will get a folder local. You have to export the path pretty much in the same way you did for GoSum, um, like this. Uh, you can do it. I'll show you on my laptop, since I have it already uh, installed, what, uh, what happens. There is now another directory, which is called OLP Sherpa. In the tutorial uh, folder here, OLP Sherpa. So this contains a Sherpa run card, a Gotham run card, and a little script to make things uh, easier for you, which contains uh, the, the commands to really uh, generate the virtual process. Um, OK, let's have a look at the Sherpa uh, run card. I'll not show you the real card. I'll show you here, because I just removed uh, not so important things. The Sherpa run card has uh, different sectors which are labeled in this way. So there is a run sector at the beginning, which contains a lot of uh, different flags for the running, uh, like the scales, the PDF, the, para the model parameters, if you're doing PP and at which center of mass energy, or if you're doing E plus E minus, uh, and some other NLO settings, which are not so important now. There is a part where the process is specified, and uh, this is done in a similar way as for GOSAM with these PDG codes. Now, 93 is a container for all possible quarks and gluons. So 93 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, uh, not 6. 6 is the top. It's not there in the initial state. It's too massive. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and the gluon, and 21. So the process we want is 93, 93, so proton, proton, to, to TT bar, and uh, other jets. And n jet here is a variable which is set to 0. So we are actually looking at 0 jets. But you can imagine here as a, a multiplication, if you put n jet to 1, you will have tt bar to plus 1 jet, tt bar plus 2 jets. So the card you have is for n jet equals 0. So it's tt bar. And then here you say again, you also have to tell Sherpa with the QCD order you want to compute, that you want to compute QCD corrections and, non, and not electroweak. Uh, 
and that we want to use uh, Gaussian as a loop generator. These are other things which are not so important, which are there. Sherpa is also a very documented online manual. You can have a look at it for more information about all these different flags. There is a part which has a selector here. You can specify if you want to use FastJet, for example. I removed it here and I took a massive example so that you don't need to install FastJet, which is a program to run a JET algorithm. And then there is an analysis part where you basically say, I want to look at the PT of the top and histogram it from 0 to 500 GV in bins of, I don't know, uh, 20. And, uh, and so on. So this is a little analysis uh, framework uh, to really do the analysis. All right. Now, let's see if Sherpa works here. If you have it installed, you should get something like this, the executable. Now you do minus F, the run card, and Sherpa starts generating some things. OK. Now, let's have a look at what happened. Let me put it again on the top. We have a, pro a folder process that Sherpa generated. This is containing the matrix elements of Sherpa, so the, the three-level ones. And more importantly here, there is the order file. Let's have a look at that. OK, this is the order file. Uh, so Sherpa says to go some through these commands what he wants. He wants QCD corrections. He wants CDR as a uh, regularization. The alpha S power, at, it's, it's 2 at, at 3 level. Remember, we are doing uh, TT, TT bar production. So you have this. or this, for example, as diagram. So you have two power at three level. Alpha power, nothing. There is no uh, um, electroweak coupling. And the other things are not so important. And, but the most important thing here is the list of processes. I mean, Sherpa, in Sherpa we said we want PP to TT bar. Now, PP to TT bar means, as I said, uh, as I draw it here, QQ bar or glue glue. That means it can be DD bar to TT bar, D bar D to TT bar, or glue glue to TT bar. Now, this is a pure QCD process. If you are doing DD bar or UU bar, it's not going to change. That's, that's why Sherpa is not asking for all the processes. Sherpa recognizes automatically that it can then use the same to remap on UU bar and, or SS bar or CC bar. OK. This is there. Now, um, the next step here is to compile the things that uh, yeah, sorry, uh, to compile the things that Sherpa generated, and for this, the Sherpa generated uh, this file, make libs. I hope it's going to work. Make libs minus j. Since I have four cores, I try to make it speed up a bit by generating on four cores. So this is now Sherpa uh, compiling its own uh, matrix elements. And here you see all the processes d, d bar, t, t bar, d, g, t, t, t bar, etc. Uh, that, was the, that was the real part, 2 to 3, and now comes the 2 to 2, so the three level ones. No, 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 this is Sherpa, no, no loop. Okay, this is now done. Um, so things uh, look uh, in a similar way because everything happened in the process uh, folder. Now we are actually ready to generate uh, the one loop part. We already looked at uh, the order file, we can now uh, generate with gosum. Now, the command to generate with gosum now is not just gosum py. It's a bit more complicated. Uh, I will not type it because it's in this make virt script that I prepared for you. But in there, there is a command which looks like this. 
goes on py. Now we are using it as an OLP with a Monte Carlo, so minus minus OLP. You can tell Sherpa as a Monte Carlo, this will switch on some flags for you automatically. We have a GoSum input card, which is called GoSum RC. We'll have a look at that uh, before we start. There is this command here, because sometimes Sherpa writes things that GoSum don't know in the order file. So we just say GoSum ignore them. We say where we want it in a folder called virtual, and then we pass the order file. This is the basic command. So let's have a quick look here at the, the um, GoSum input card. So you recognize here uh, there is no, not in and out because this is in the order file. Uh, we just select here the, the model, SM Diag, and we say an F is equal 5, the number of light flavors is equal to 5, because we have up, down, charm, strange, and bottom, but we generate only one. That means that if we start having these loops here, we generate them only for one type of quarks, namely for, uh, for the D quark. And then uh, uh, go some nodes and we multiply these by five because this is all now pure QCD and there is nothing different if we have uh, different flavors running in, this, in, that, in, that, uh, in that loop because this is just a pure QCD co correction. That's why we can also say here to QGraph, don't, please don't generate U, S, charm, bottom, all away. We just have D. This reduces a lot the number of diagrams. And then we multiply by five all uh, the diagrams that uh, we need to multiply by five. Okay. Well, that's it, more or less. So, make weird. And this is now basically doing this uh, um, go some py command. Uh, then go some is generated here with a dynamic library because you need, uh, you need to link it to to, to share, but that's why you see a bit more of blah, blah, blah. But you see here, you recognize the form part. Uh, this is what you were getting before with make source. Now there is a make compile. And it has to go through all the processes that uh, Sherpa asks for. Uh, I think it's almost finished. Uh, let's see. In the meanwhile, let me continue here. Okay. Uh, while it's continuing, what we get at the end will look like this. We will have a folder virtual with the virtual code. We will have the library with the code from the virtual part here. This is actually just a link which is automatically created by the script. But anyway, and the, this is the contract file. Okay, um, and once we, we are there, then we are really ready to start. Uh, in the meanwhile, we can have a look at the contract file. This is the way the contract file generated by GoSum will look like. So the things that GoSum recognized are labeled with an OK, and the things with GoSum don't really know what it means, uh, you see it's just ignored because we said ignore it. The important thing is now this one. Sherpa asked for these processes. Gosam is giving back these processes with a label, one, two, or zero. So Sherpa will have to read this label so that he knows, okay, I want to have now a glue-glue process. I need to call Gosam with zero. I want to have a QQ bar. I need to call it with one or a Q bar Q with two. Let's see. It's still running. Okay, never mind. At, at this point, everything is ready. The only thing you need to do is to go into, go into the Sherpa card and uncomment two lines which were commented because, uh, because the, order, the, the contract file was not yet there. So this, this, uh, this, file, th this line was commented 
and also the library for Golem was not yet created, so this line was commented, but now they are there, so you can uncomment them, and then you can really start now generating things with GoSum. Uh, sorry, with Sherpa. And at first you need, I don't know how familiar you are with NLO calculation or with Monte Carlo calculation. The first step is to uh, generate a phase space grid with Vegas, which adapts. That means you generate many, many points and you see where in the phase space the, the matrix element is big, so where you need to sample a lot of events because you have large contribution and where there is nothing. So you need to build this grid. So the Monte Carlo as a first step will just sample phase space point randomly for a while, look at where there are many and adapt and start sampling more when where things are important when the, where the amplitude is large and sample less where the amplitude is zero. And this adaptation goes on for a while. At some point you will have good grids so that the Monte Carlo knows where the important uh, parts of the amplitude are. At that point, which is, uh, so this part of the grid formation, you, it's given with this command. And you see, I say events zero because I don't want yet to fill histograms with this. I just want to build the grid and see where the amplitude is important. And as a last step, then you can really start doing the calculation and uh, filling the, the histogram. Doing this, this is really doing the simulation. Then. Okay, let me let me conclude here, and then we go back and see if Sherpa finished, so that we keep it more or less on a reasonable time scale. So, as I said, there are still many unexplained aspects uh, of GOSAM and also, of course, uh, even more on the, on the last uh, bit that is uh, interfacing with, with Monte Carlo. Uh, I showed you Sherpa here, but that works also for AMC TNLO. It's a bit less straightforward, perhaps, um, but this can be done, was done, and is also documented uh, how to do that. So, as I said, there is already a lot of information that you got in a very little time. Now it's time to digest it, and that's why I think it's good to stop here. Uh, anyway, what I've shown you is, is uh, that GoSum is actually a very flexible tool to generate uh, tree level also, because it generates always the Born as well, and envelope loop amplitudes. It's open source, so you can download it, you can hack it, improve it, well, if you hack it and then you get the wrong answer, it's up to you. We don't take responsibility, but what you get uh, by default should give you uh, the correct uh, answer for uh, many, many uh, processes. You can interface it with a Monte Carlo via this uh, Lesouch interface. And as I said, uh, apart from Sherpa, there are also other uh, possibilities. For any questions and curiosity, just contact me. Uh, Pierre Power is here. Uh, we have a web page. You can uh, send tickets. Uh, yeah. Don't hesitate uh, if you have questions. Just try to use the code, play around with it. And uh, yeah, let us know if you have problems. Okay. I would finish here and then we look if Sherpa finished. Thanks. Okay, cool. Uh, actually, this was Ghost. I'm now finishing. Now we have also the contract file. So now we can really at least see Sherpa starting. Uh, let me do the following. Okay, now you see Sherpa starts doing the, this grid thing, and here it gives the total cross-section. This is now done for born virtual and integrated part, which have the same phase space. It's an n-particle phase space. Then the real part has a one particle more in the final state, so this is it's another phase space, it's separate. Well, that's, that's what, uh, what, what happens. 
Shepa should say, uh, this is going to take another 11, 8 seconds. Here. 5. So now it finished the BVI part. Uh, it's going to take 5 minutes for the real, so forget. <laughs> I think we stop here, yes. Uh, you have everything to run this example. I hope uh, uh, I tested it enough to, that it runs out of the box. So give it a try. The um, to see, no, to see really the poll cancellation, there is a flag which probably is there in the card. Uh, you need to uncomment, uncomment, uncomment it, and then you could see that Sherpa checks also that the poll, Gosam is giving the poll to Sherpa. So this poll cancellation check, which you could see in the test, is actually performed by, by, by Sherpa. Um, and this you, you can see, yes. All right, thanks. <laughs>